Today is September 6, 2014. Papa's going to recount some of his uh, memories of his childhood and his birth and uh, continuation of the previous video that we did. So, you can go ahead and start, Pop. Okay. I was born in what in those days were a, sm a small uh, city, about 5,000 uh, uh, population. I was born in September 13, 1921. And I went through grammar school in Monclova. Then my father decided uh, that it would be convenient for me to go to Monterey and go to a, a trade school by the name of uh, Escuela Industrial Álvaro Obregón. I used to, I used to be four years. Terminé yo. English. English. <laughs> you were there you were there four years? I was there for four for well, four years. Why Monterrey? Was there family there? Did he have family or did you have family? No. He 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 thought that that uh, he was in his years and that it would be advisable for me to go into learning a trade mm. rather than a, a, a profession like med medicine or mm. something like that. So, so where did you stay? Who, who did you stay with? Who did you stay with? Well, he sent me to Monterey with uh, my grandmother Mercedes Alcocer and uh, she, she took care of me while I was going to school, to trade school. I was in trade school for four years and after, after trade school I went to work at a division of a, a big brewery, the Cerveceria Cuauhtémoc. And the division I went to work for it was a stamping place where they made the crowns for the beer bottles. Mm -hmm. And also, stamping products. I, I was uh, working there from uh, 1930, the 1937 to 1950. In 1950, two of my fellow workers and I decided to try to establish a, a machine shop, which we did. And uh, we found out that uh, making a living on the machine shop was not easy because of the competition. One of my, the fellow that was uh, in charge of getting the jobs, he would go to, let's say, a, a, a big company and get maybe 10 blueprints and then we be in, in these jobs. But uh, from 10 bids, uh, maybe we got 
three or four or so. So, in 1953, my brother Armando came to the United States and he told me, I'm going to Chicago, would you like to go with me for a few days? And I said, sure, I would like to. So I came with my brother and I made a big mistake because uh, I, I came as a visitor and I worked for two weeks. <laughs> then I decided to go back to Monterey and when the boss reached Laredo the immigration stopped the boss and asked me for my papers and I said well I have him in my suitcase I said he said the immigration officer said, eh, no problem, come with me. So he took me to immigration headquarters and he says, sit down over there. And he went to get my suitcase. <laughs> and when he came back, <coughs> he had a slip that showed that I worked. Hmm. So I violated the immigration laws because I was, I came as a visitor and I, even though it was only a couple of weeks and I was going back, I violated the immigration laws. So I went back to Monterey to keep in, working with the machine, sh in the machine shop. But they, they put you in jail for an immigration? They put me in jail for one week. And then after my seven days in jail, one officer took me to the middle of the Rio Grande and he says, okay, from here over, this is your country. So I, I went back to the machine shop with my friends. And uh, as I said, it was pretty hard to get, uh, to make a good living with the machine shop. But since my brother was already in, in, in Chicago, I applied for for uh, permission to come to the to the United States, and they were very blunt. They told me there's no need for you to come to this country, and applied twice. And the second time they told me, don't waste your time writing us again. So this is what I did. I made a, recollect, a re recollection of, of my uh, education. So I wrote a letter and I explained that after trade school, I went to, to, uh, to, to complete uh, something that I had, I hadn't taken a trade school. So 
I was allowed to study these subjects at home and I, I would take a, a, an examination and finally I got the secondary school uh, diploma. After that I decided to continue to continue studying. But I, I was already working and uh, at night school I went to what at, at, at one time was called Escuela de Bachilleres. That's uh, where the education, you took the subjects that could prepare you to go into uni the, the university. In this, uh, in this uh, school there were two years if you were studying days, but I took three years because I was working and at, at night I was going to preparatory school. There were three branches that you you studied. Uh, you would go to prepare to be a lawyer or you would be prepared to be uh, an engineering and another one is uh, to go to dentistry or medicine. So uh, after three years I finished and when I was working they would allow me to work from midnight to seven o'clock in the morning. And I had a I had a bike a bike and since I worked from midnight to seven o'clock I had, on my bike I went to the university and I started to I start to take uh, subjects into medicine but uh, it took me two years to go through first year of medicine and I realized that it was impossible and besides, they wouldn't allow me to keep on working here on, on the ship that I had. So, so you, you, you were working at the brewery? I was working. It, it was, the brewery had a stamping division. Yeah, at the stamping division. Where they made the crowns for the for the beer bottles and also uh, products, uh, stamping uh, right, right. products. So, so they wouldn't let you stay on the midnight to seven o'clock shift. No. But uh, I made an application to to. To, to come to the United States and I was denied. They said, there's no need for you to be in this country. But uh, I wrote a letter and I, I mentioned all these years that went to night school 
in, up to first year of medical school. And uh, somehow I touch something because uh, I got a letter from immigration that said, you can come to this country, which was a miracle because later on uh, it was extremely difficult to, to get uh, to, to be allowed to, to, come, uh, to come to this country. What year was that? Was that 1954, 53? No, I came to this country in 19... Uh, in 1950... In 1953... In 1953, I came to this country. And I had a... I had experience on the machine shop and I was very lucky, very lucky that in those years uh, manufacturing was still done in this country. But uh, later on the manufacturing went overseas and as I said, I was very lucky. I was very lucky to come to this country and I'm very grateful because I, ra I raised my family in this country and well, when you came to this country where did you work? I worked for a, for a small place, for a small place, and I happened to this place that that I, I worked for was a, a a small company of which there were there were maybe five or six skilled people and they were people to run the production. So they would give me a, a blueprint and would say make three 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 uh, three pieces from this uh, from this blueprint, and I made the blueprint. I made the, the parts, and these parts would go to inspection from a, from the customer, and upon approval, they would tell me make the tooling to run production, and they we, they would run several thousands of parts and, and so on. And uh, I worked I there at, the, at that place for, I don't know, for about 10 years. But then th this place was owned by two two partners, one would get the jobs and the other one supervise the workers. But uh, it didn't last, it didn't last because uh, my uh, The, the partner that would get the jobs had, had a, a very wild son and one day he was an Italian fellow, 
short. And this guy had a, a personality or something that we would working, we would would be working at the shop, and he would stand at the door, and you could feel his <laughs> his uh, his vision, his uh, magnetism, or uh, you could feel that this, this guy had something. Unfortunately, his youngest, his youngest son, when he was uh, in second grade of high school, well, Paul told us one day, stop working and I'd like to talk to you guys. And we went to his office and he said, my son Tony, he is in second in, in second year of the high school and he refuses to study. So Paul went into a depression and he was dead pretty soon. But then I, I worked at a couple of places and I was fortunate to get a job at a place where they built huge drug lines that they were using for the mining. Uh, and I was lucky that I was a uh, I was I I was foreman on, on the second shift and uh, most most of all I, I I'm grateful to God that I was able to come to this country and where all my children are, except one my one of my daughters that remain in Mexico. But uh, that's that's what my story is. But what about the, your family in Mexico? Your brothers and uh, well, my brother, your father. What my father, uh, my father sent me to the, this industrial school because he was he was old in the sense that he he didn't think that he would provide me with uh, education on a on a profession. So, but I was very lucky that I was allowed to come to this country except one of my daughters that stayed in Mexico, right. Raquel. But your father was a doctor. Hmm? Your father was a doctor. Well, I come from a, from a line of a, people that were long-lived. My grandfather, Ausencio Fernandez, lived to uh, about 75 years. And my father, even though he was a doctor, he never took medications and he died at 83. And now, I'm 93, I'm still here. <laughs> so, I'm thankful 
Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank truth to God that allows me to be in fairly good shape. Mostly, I still have a clear mind. I can carry conversations. And it's a it's on long life. But all of your bro- all of your uh, cousins and on your father's side were from Moclova. They stayed in Moclova. Everybody stayed in Moclova. No. Actually, I never met one of my one of my uncles. Uh, they came. They went to some other places and. Uh, some of them came to the United States, and but I, I never met uh, relatives on my father's day, mm-hmm. on my father's side. So, because your your mother ended up coming to Monterrey, mm-hmm. Soka Soko ended up coming to Monterrey. Well, they. They used to live uh, in southern Mexico, but in those years there were revolutions, and uh, so they came north. They used to live in the state of Michoacán, mm-hmm. but there was a revolutions in those years, and they came north. And they stopped at this town, Monclova, where I was born. And my uncles, and my my relatives on my mother's side, they lived in in Monclova. But, but how did how did Soko end up in Monterrey? How did Soko end up? Living in Monterrey. Well, she was my, my mother, even though she wasn't, she didn't have a, a much education. She was very, very smart, I would say. And uh, she came to Monterey to take care of, of my brothers and sisters that in, in Monterey went to school. And she, but uh, I, think, I think that's very much. Your mother ended up having a beauty salons. Yeah, yeah. She was very uh, uh, very dynamic, and she had a beauty salon, and she had two. Hmm? She had two beauty salons. She had two. Yeah. When I was there, she had two. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's okay. That's about the. Uh, that's good. Quite kind. I recollect of my of my life, but I'm very grateful to God that. Uh, I was allowed to come to this country and I'm still here. (laughs) Hope you're here for for sure. For sure. I wouldn't be here if I had stayed in Mexico because the income of a of a uh, worker in Mexico is very, very low compared to what you can earn. Yeah. Well, uh, your, your brothers are still around, Armando's still living, 
Alejandro still living, uh, Belia. How Belia is, is she the third oldest or? Well, I haven't heard from Be Belia, my sister, for a long time. And I, I suppose that she's still living because mm -hmm. I haven't heard that she passed away. And uh, Armando's in Puerto Rico. My brother Armando was lucky to work for one of the divisions of General Motors. And uh, he worked there. And he retired from there with excellent benefits. And he married Aida, which is uh, from Puerto Rico. And at present, Armando is living in Puerto Rico. And my other brother, he lives in San Antonio, Texas. And he's retired. He's retired. Oh yeah. They are all retired. My youngest brother is twelve years younger than I am. But but since I was ninety three he, he must be what? Eighty one. Eighty one. And Armando is, uh, he said, he was mama's uh, age, so he must be like 87 86 or 87. Mm. So Bel Belia was older than Armando? Belia, yeah. Is she the second one? So you, you were the oldest? Well, Belia was in, in, in between uh, Armando and R Rebecca. Mm. And she married and she, she if, She's still living, I, I, I think. She is. It's, it's, uh, she must be in the, in the town that I know, which is no town anymore, Monclova now. It's a city. <laughs> like all the, yeah. all the cities in, in, in Mexico, they are huge. Mexico in 1940 had like 20, 20 million uh, population, but now, like it has like a hundred and thirty million. <laughs> so to make a, a a living in Mexico, mm. it's very hard. It's impossible. It's very hard. Because a lot, of, a lot of people, a lot of people, uh, but uh, as I said, we are lucky that yeah. that Uncle Sam and God allows to to be here and. We have no, no economic uh, problems. Okay. So. Yo creo que ahí, a ver. ¿Qué día es hoy? When? Today is September 6, 2014. So
So my father's going to recount some stories that he missed the last time he did the video. So we, we will start. So, ¿dónde quieres empezar? ¿Dónde quieres empezar? ¿Cuándo? México. De México. Voy a empezar. Voy a empezar diciendo que yo nací en un en un pequeño en un pequeño pueblo de 5000 habitantes con el nombre de Monclova, Coahuila. Allí nací y cuando terminé la primaria mi papá me mandó a Monterrey a estudiar a una escuela de artes y oficios, escuela llamada Escuela Industrial Álvaro Obregón. Ahí estuve cuatro años y aprendí el el oficio del maquinado, el, del taller mecánico. En aquellos años permitían que los alumnos entraran directamente de la primaria, como lo hice yo. Después comenzaron a exigir que, que los estudiantes tuvieran instrucción superior. Puedes hacer una pausa. <risa> 